Hey everybody, Serlin here from the Fantasy Strike team, and I'm here to welcome you to our first developer update video. And I hope with these videos we can explain some things about what we're working on and, and why we make the decisions that we make and let you know that we're listening to your feedback. And today I want to talk a little bit about character balance, and I'll cover some actually small changes that we'll make to Setsuki and DeGray. But before I get into the specifics, a couple things about character balance in general. So first, it's important, but it's not something that we're really focusing on right now. We're more trying to build out the rest of the game and get all the content in place and features and increase our production values and so on. But character balance is something that we can do all along the way, and it's something we have worked on on the side throughout the entire project. And it's actually in a very good spot right now. Uh, if you had asked me months ago, like, who are the best characters, who are the worst characters, I could give you a, a tier list, but I can't really do that right now. They all uh, seem so kind of compressed because we've, we've buffed the weak characters and nerfed the best characters, and they're all pretty close. So, uh, of course, we are going to make a lot of changes over time. Uh, perceptions change, things change, but we're in a pretty good spot right now. And the second thing I want to mention about balance in general is that, again, though it's important, what this video will show is it's not always the primary reason to even make changes. So the changes that I'll tell you in just a moment about DeGray and Setsuki, they are power level changes, but it's not the reason that we're doing them. We're actually making those changes because of the dynamics. So what I mean by that, by the dynamics of a game is kind of how it plays out. It's the different situations that you will find yourself in. It's the the set of payoffs for doing this versus that. And that's something that we, we needed to feel right. We need the, the, the various reads and setups and again, the situations to really be fun and interesting and deep. And if we can get that in place and working correctly, that's a good foundation to then make little tweaks about the power level. But if we start with with the power level and focus too much on that, it can be to the detriment of, of the game's depth. So let's go into the specifics. And I'll cover DeGray first because it's, it's really just so simple. And Setsuki will take a little bit more explanation. So for DeGray, He's a, he's an interesting character, and he's one that our more advanced players tend to gravitate towards because there's so much he can do. And we like that. We like all of the things he can do and his various tricks and, and techniques. And we think his power level over the last few months has been pretty good. So the problem is that we've started to realize that a couple of his moves in particular just have too much frame advantage. And so this this kind of varied gameplay of all these different things you can do, well, we have some players that are starting to just focus on these two moves kind of over and over again. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a little degenerate. It's not really what we're looking for. And they're just able to be a little bit too successful, and it feels what I would call fraudulent. You know, it feels like they're not really having to use everything that the character has. So by lowering the frame advantage on these two moves, uh, it it's a nerf, yes, but in my mind, it, it's really just putting him back to kind of the way we've been playing him all along. Like it's, it's, it's just like an oversight that we didn't really realize how good the, the frame advantage on these two moves are. And the two moves are his air B, which is like a kind of diagonal flying kick, and his ground neutral A, which is a punch. Now, each of those moves, you can actually press the button twice. You can do air B, B, or you can do ground A, A. But I'm talking about the the first hit in both cases. So for the ground punch, it is plus five on block, plus five frames. That means if the opponent blocks it, then DeGray will recover five frames earlier than the opponent. And the, the air B... It's a little hard to say what the frame advantage is because it really depends on how high you hit them and, and how early and, and all that, but it, it's positive, it's plus frames. And so what we've seen is some players that, it's almost like they'll they'll flip a coin, like heads is air B and, 
and Tails is ground A, and it's like, you know, A, A again, but not the second hit, just the first hit repeated. First hit again, Air B, Air B, A, A, Air B, and it's just a little too good. Now, we do kind of like that he can do it because he's supposed to be about frame traps. So this isn't something we, we want to take away, really. We just want to make it not as crazy. So instead of being plus five on block, his A punch is just plus one. So still a little bit of frame advantage. And his Air B will have, uh, I, I forget if it's five or six frames of extra recovery. And what that works out to is if you do it real close in, in their face, like you're just pressuring them with it over and over, it comes out slightly minus, like minus one frames. And if you do it from a little farther away, it still uh, ends up plus on block. So in both cases, he can still use these moves, uh, just not as overwhelmingly. And because of that, he'll need to use all of his other tricks. And this is just something that I think you'll mix in. Uh, so players who are just only doing that won't be quite so successful anymore. So the second character that we're making some changes to is Sitsuki. And as I said, it takes a little bit more explanation to know what's going on with her. And, and again, this is about her dynamics, not about her power level, even though it does affect the power level. So the situation here is that when she presses the C button, she does her starlight tumbler move, so spin forward. And then so far, it, when you press the C button a second time, she can do a throw. Or uh, if you press the A button, during that spin, she'll do a dive kick. She can do other moves too, but those are kind of the, the most important right now uh, for context of this discussion. So if they expect you to do the throw, they can jump out. Uh, that's because in Fantasy Strike, you can always jump out of special throws. So let's say that you, you press C the first time and you're spinning at them and you think they're going to jump because they're expecting the throw. So you do the dive kick. The dive kick will hit them out of the air. So that is a coherent thing that makes sense so far. You've got these two options, and they can they can jump or they could block the dive kick. The problem is that if they block the dive kick, it's very plus on block, and she can land and do a normal move on the ground, cancel that into the sea again. And the point is that she can make them block another dive kick. So if they guessed correctly that uh, no throw was coming, so they... So they didn't jump and they blocked. Yeah, they, they they got out of it, but they're just in it again. They're just, you know, she can just keep doing this C dive kick, C dive kick. Uh, and you can't jump out. So what you could do is you could use a super move to get out. And uh, just super moves in Fantasy Strike fill up automatically over time. So she does this sequence a few times and you don't have a reversal to get out other than your super meter. You can wait and you can get out. So this, this uh, situation is not really game-breaking, and we don't strictly have to address it. It's just a little iffy, design-wise, that uh, this, this guess just doesn't, it doesn't feel right that the, the opponent get, guesses correctly, and yet they're still kind of stuck in this. Uh, it, it, just, it just seems like it's missing something. So here's what we'll do to address that. Now, the part where the dive kick is uh, safe on block and can be repeated, that's kind of good. We kind of want that. Uh, it allows her to keep up her pressure. It, it's just a, a question of how oppressive is it? How oppressive do we really want her to be? All right, so the change here is, maybe it's easier if I if I start with, uh, with the throw portion of this. So the change is that if you hold the C button down, that used to not really be a, a command. But now if you hold it down, she'll spin at them, and then she will do the, do the throw. And what's kind of nice there is that it matches uh, the, the feeling of if you hold her B button down, that is a, a teleport kick thing that will, will actually do a throw too. So now if you hold B or C, they're both throws. Anyway, if you hold B, she'll do the throw, and they can jump to get out. If you uh, press C and then C again, which used to be the throw command, now it will do her flying fox move where she kind of flies towards them. And that will hit them out of the air. If they jump, that move is gonna be right on top of them and active immediately and it will hit them out of their jump very well. 
But the very key thing here is if they block, the flying fox kind of goes like this, and it's terrible for her on block. It's not something that she can just repeat over and over. So if you guess right there and you block her flying fox, uh, you, you kind of get to play again. And that leaves the dive kick. So the dive kick, uh, like I said, we kind of want you to be able to pressure with it. So if you press C and then A, you'll, you'll get dive kick. And it's tuned to be a little bit slower such that they can jump out now. Uh, if, they, if they choose not to jump out, you can keep doing it over and over. And also you can space it and time it so that it, it can hit their jump. You, so you can still kind of do what you used to be able to do. But it's it's situational. It's it's not as as oppressive. It's it's not as powerful. So she's not so much about about that. It's and in both cases, I think you can see that with Degray and Satsuki, we're kind of taking a thing that was a little questionable, a, you know, a little too much emphasis on them, and we're not removing those things. We're just uh, using a light touch <laughs> to. Uh, to, to make them a, a little more in line with the power level of the rest of the character. So if you'd like to try these things out, uh, they're available to play right now on uh, on our Patreon, and uh, people who uh, subscribe there get access to something we call the Wild West branch of Fantasy Strike, where we kind of just uh, try out uh, sometimes crazy things, and we show things that are very early you, it, you could think of it a little bit like a public test realm but not not really because it's it's showing things that are much earlier in development than you would normally show on a commercial games public uh, test branch anyway uh people that support us there all of that money goes directly into the game so that that's just one option but uh f for the rest of you if you just uh wait a little bit we're going to be releasing those balance changes very soon on Steam. So I hope you hope you enjoy and uh, I'll be back next time on a different topic of something we're working on. So thank you very much.